So next up we need to really start supporting an expandable control and we know right now that this pop-up is not going to support that because when it opens up we set the size once and we never set that size again. So let's first take a look at making an expandable control and we can chuck it inside of here for the moment but we'll have to move it out because uh, when it doesn't work we need to be able to see what it should look like before we try to then fix it. So if we just do an expander, basically put the content inside an expander and then do expander.header to specify the header and inside there we can do whatever we like. So for now we'll just do content. This is a long header text. And if we run that now, I presume we'll see the header in its collapsed form like that. And when we expand as expected, we're not seeing any expansion. Now I'm not sure whether the expander has an is expanded maybe. Yep, is expanded uh, property to true. And this would make it by default expanded. So we should then see the extended property as you can see, but then it's fixed at that height. And if there's many of these in this list, and this list can grow longer, we kind of have an issue there. So if we move this expander, or we just copy the expander and leave that one there, because we need that one. Then we just go down to uh, the, say, rectangle here. Let's just change this graph to a uh, border for now. And then inside the border, paste the expander. And let's take a look at how this expander is working. So we can see here then, it naturally expands, and in this case it's filling the content because we are inside of a grid, so it's going to naturally fill all the content it can. So if we were to then add, say, uh, vertical alignment to left, uh, to top, and horizontal alignment to left, that would act similarly to just being in the normal pop-up control we have, where it just expands to fill. So this is kind of the expected behavior we want from this. For this to expand up and down. In order to do that, it might seem complicated, but all we're doing is animating a control to a certain point and animating a control backwards. And the calculated size we can take at any time we like and simply remove that fixed width. We only need to set the width and height of the control to force the animation. Once we're done, we can simply remove that restriction. So it's not going to be as complicated as it sounds. Uh, but let's just start in animated pop-up and let's go to where we finish the animation. So I think it's animation complete. Yep, here. And uh, instead of setting the final size to be the desired size, we want to just reset this to whatever it was when it started. So to find that out, I guess we could find it out at this point when it would first get overridden. So let's just look at what a non-sized control would be if we don't want to force the size. So that's zero, that's zero. And in fact, we're probably best checking because I'm sure it won't be zero because it can't be zero, we set it to zero. So where are we setting the width and height first? We must be setting that somewhere. Oh, is it here we're getting set first? It's either going to be like positive infinite, negative infinite, or not a number or something. That's not breakpointing. Okay, let's just be lazy and chuck it in the constructor. Start this and then scroll and hover over the width property. And of course we're getting no breakpoints now. Why are we not getting breakpoints? Yep, no breakpoints whatsoever. Uh, let's just kill this and start again. And let's see if we can hit any breakpoints at all. There we go, breakpoints are working again. So if we scroll up to width anywhere in the code, just so we can hover over. Uh, of course, can't find one instance of it. There we go, so let's hover over now. And there we go, not a number. So we need to set the width and the height to NAN, not a number instead of the desired width and height. So that can be double dot, not a number. And it's a special value that effectively sets the double to 
not a number as it states and the UI then auto sizes the width and the height based on what the control wants to do so it sets it to the desired width and height so if we run this now we should at least be able to expand once the control is open the animation will be probably broken take off all the breakpoints now they're working so we can see we can expand still but now the control can open and close but if you notice on close let's slow that animation down so you can see and probably update this to the correct format for hour, minute and second and let's change it to three seconds you will see that when we close the animation you can see it takes three seconds there if we open when we close the first step is going to think the desired size is still this size so it's going to jump down to here and then scale in as you see and then when you expand it's going to open out and then jump open so we need to reset the desired size and now it just simply comes down to when do we want to reset that desired size at what point do we want to recalculate well the point that we want to recalculate is when we close the control so if we go to when we update the open and firstly we shouldn't be running this code every time the value is set because what that can actually do is this could run twice and try and add this row twice so if we click really fast as expected there this open is running twice because it's already been set to true we've injected this control and then we've clicked again before it's covered the button and injected again so we can do two fail safes for that one if the value hasn't changed then we don't do anything so if the value equals the current property behind then we do nothing and then just as a double check in case this just happens to run any other way let's just do if grid.children.contains and then we'll negate this so if the grid doesn't contain the control then insert it so we've got like a double check that should get rid of the double clicking issue so yeah you can click that button as many times as you like you can click the close button as many times as you like and you can do it midway through animations so that seems all stable now so with that fixed let's go back to what we were doing and all we need to do here now is to set the new desired size and we want to set it when we are closing so instead of open if closing we want to update the desired size and we probably want to make a property for this update desired size because we already do that somewhere there so we don't want to have this logic duplicated and then going astray so we'll just move that into a method comment the method updates the desired size based on the current um, visuals desired size so updates the animation desired size to that that makes sense now and what's wrong with that inconsistent body styles yeah I can use expressions okay And then that wants to be in private methods. And there we go. So if we now go back up to here, update desired size, and let's check this out. So every time we go to close the control, we're going to get the current size of the control so let it expand up if we open 
And now at the point of closing, so this will be here, you can see we get update desired size, and we're gonna now get the new desired size, which will simply be the size the control currently is. So this larger size, we're gonna update this size, and then we come into animation, and when the animation kicks in, it's simply gonna use that desired size here to calculate a new animation value. So now the desired size is the new larger one, and it's gonna animate based on that new larger size. So you can see it's animating up to the big top. Uncheck that so we can see. And it currently animates up to whatever size we have it at the point in closing, so now, and closes down. So if we change this to that, it should now smoothly animate from that point. So it simply takes the size of the control at the point in time we're about to close it. And that actually might be an issue that I've just seen. Yeah, see that jumping? So that will happen if we change the... Ah, so we're closing the control before it's opened. So if we click the control, don't let it fully open, and then click to close, it's gonna still take the desired size, which is the currently animating size, so not the desired control size, it's wherever it's currently animating, and then on close, we're using that. So we need to do in here, uh, only if is opened. So that checks if the control is basically finished, if the animation's finished. So only if it's opened, do we want to update the size? So this will mean we'll only update the desired closing size if it managed to fully open. So if the control is currently fully open, update the size. And that should get, yeah, that's nice and smooth now. So that's back to how it should be. So we've attempted to close it shorter and there's no issues there. Open it midway, close midway, open midway. Yeah, all seems to be nice and smooth now. So I think there we have some solid support for the pop-up now having any size uh, content. So that was nowhere near as difficult as I thought and probably nowhere near as difficult as you guys might have thought that would be to do. Uh, supporting a expandable pop-up even in this visual, is now much easier. So you can see now we have a nice pop-up. Okay, one last thing I'll just do is chuck in an animation opacity direct property. So I just made a Boolean direct property with animation opacity set to true by default. I'll just wrap that in a region And then if we just go down to where we currently animate the overlay opacity, we'll just copy and paste that, and instead we'll just animate our own opacity. If we want to animate the opacity based on the property, then we just simply set the animation of the opacity. Uh, we already store the original opacity because we save that as part of this control, because we hide the control then when we're getting the initial size. So that's all we really have to do. Uh, we run that now and it should animate the property to whatever the opacity is set on the control. And then just for a double check, when it's fully open, just in case it's like one tick off, uh, we want to make sure we fully uh, reset the opacity to whatever it originally was, just as kind of a, a backup that we are resetting that opacity. Uh, you know, the time it finishes one short and it's 99.99 instead of 100, it might make things slower. And then if we just run that now, so you've got kind of nice fade in and fade out of animation as well. So next up really is to get this animation uh, expander looking like the original loudness meter. So you can see we've got uh, effectively four expanders here uh, with a header and content. So we're showing one, but in here we want to have four. So what we'll do is make a a view model that contains a list of the lists, so a list of each of those. 
So our list would contain four elements, and those four elements would have a header and subcontent. And then we'll just simply bind that to our UI, and the UI will have a list containing the expanders, and inside the expanders they'll be bound to uh, another list. So that's really it for this one. That wasn't too bad. We now support expanding and collapsing on our control, and we've added some nice fading opacity.